So in our previous lesson uh, question, we talked about IoT, Internet of Things. So this other question still based on that one. It says security challenges that accompany IoT. So IoT, as much as it is first uh, technology that is coming up today, it experiences lots and lots of challenges. The first challenge is lack of visibility. So users of this IoT, they buy the IoT, but they do not consult the IT professionals. Remember, the IT professionals are able to, to, to tell them, they are able to, to know which particular devices to, to network or to, to connect using this IoT. So if that is not there, then the users end up buying IoT devices and putting them in a very awkward manner in very unimportant devices within their houses. Two, we have what we call open source code vulnerabilities. So open source means free. So this software or firmware that are developed for IoT devices, they, own, or they also come with open source software, which uh, I think is easier for other people to just change these codes and to bug them. And this makes this IoT is very vulnerable that any person can come and just change the codes and maybe interfere with the normal programming or the normal operations of this IoT. Also, we have what we call poor testing. This is at the implementation or the, at the place where it is, the, the IoTs are being made. So this is because the IoT developers, those people who develop this IoT, they may be, security is not at the top of their priorities. So these developers do not take the security features as serious as they should. So this leaves uh, uh, these uh, users of these IoTs with some loophole concerning the security use of these IoTs. And also weak passwords. Remember, some these IoTs when they are bought, the user should change the passwords to put some appropriate strong passwords that can protect these devices from unauthorized access. If this doesn't happen, or if they just continue the passwords that they uh, that they, 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 they came with, then these IoTs be, uh, end up becoming very vulnerable. And then the question, the, the next question he says, benefits of requirement gathering processing. So this still goes to uh, information system development or information, we call it ISDL. So what is the benefit of ISDL? Why do you need to carry out a project or to do a project procedurally? Why don't you just do a project once? Why, it, why, this, why should it be from step to step? Remember we talk about this, the steps of requirement gathering, why you need to do uh, quite some feasibility study, where you have to design, where you have to implement, where you have to do some testing. So all those are procedures or so the phases that involve SDL. Why is it important? One is that there are fewer defects in delivering all of that. So if these procedures are carried out well from conception, then we'll have very few defects that are easily corrected for this product to be perfect or for this product to meet the required obligation or standard. Two is what we call less development rework. Remember, if you do the pro process procedurally with few defects, then you do not have to go back again. Uh, you do not have to redo some bits or some phases or some modules of this process. And also we have what we call faster delivery of the finished product. So if this, this process is done, uh, effectively as it should be, then there will be no time wasted by looking at the defects or by taking the product back to the conception level. So this one helps you to deliver the product faster as a developer. And also to, the last, uh, the, the second last one is the less unused features. Remember, you can, de you can uh, design features as a program that is not used, or that are not used by the users at the end of it all. They do not need those features. So this is why you have to gather information from them. This is why you have to check it to them before you finish this product so that they, they test it and you know which features they are more useful for these people.
and also we have higher level of uh, satisfaction from stakeholders remember because you you have to take this product to these stakeholders from time to time you end up having a very good product that satisfies the need of each and every stakeholder in this organization then question number c says challenges that a business could encounter in adopting e-commerce so some business today migrate to e-commerce because of the uh, uh, changes that have occurred internet has come up as a very powerful tool in business and so most business migrate to the internet space so if the business do so what are the challenges that they are likely to encounter one is what we call cyber security this is the security that the insecurity sorry that exists over the internet remember they are what we call the uh, the crime over the internet uh, such as cyber terrorism or people could just be intercepting your information over the internet or people could be uh, forming or creating duplicate fake websites so those are what we call cyber security competition the business is likely to find competition there because most businesses have migrated now to this space and therefore the business must uh, come up and, uh, and ensure that they offer the best or they provide the, the, their best because of the competition. But there's another challenge called return and refund policies. Remember in this case, sometimes we do not deal with the customers face to face. These orders are made online and, 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 and the payments are also done using money transfer services, maybe some online. So whenever you need to do a refund or to return the money, maybe because the customer is satisfied with the product. Remember, the customer has not directed the product face to face. So sometimes uh, they just saw the the, the, the the image of the product, which looks like it. So most of the time, you find that you, you uh, the customers will not be satisfied, and you have to do refunds. And also, there is what we call the customer experience. So some customers will not be uh, uh, very happy to deal with these systems. Because remember, in this in this in, the, in this uh, type of business, the business is purely online. And the last question here says that: What are the challenges that are encountered when using the SDLC? Remember, we have been talking about this system development life cycle. So, what are the challenges that are uh, encountered when you are doing this as a way of uh, project uh, management. The first one is prototyping too infrequently. Prototyping is a uh, prototype is uh, a, a model of the real system. So sometimes people do not prepare these models, or these models are prepared less frequently. So when you prototype too infrequently, then you could experience a challenge coming out with the required product. And also we have planning time frames. Sometimes we give too big or too little time frames for our products that are not realistic. Sometimes if you give a very long time frame or a very short time frame, then the stakeholders could sometimes wait for a longer time for this product that you have given us short time frame to deliver. And also we have failure to allocate task appropriately. So because this is a SDLC, in, involved very many users at very many levels, at very many stakeholders, so you have to allocate time to those people who deal, or to these implementers or those people you are working with at the, each and every level, that will do the user interface, that will deal with the database, that will do, deal uh, with maybe just the relationship within the database. These people should be allocated tasks appropriate so if you fail to allocate this task uh, 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 appropriate then there's likelihood of failure in this